Hello, I'm Erica from the Seattle Public Library, and I'm here today to tell you all about this year's Global Reading Challenge. The Global Reading Challenge is a program from the Seattle Public Library in partnership with Seattle Public Schools. Students are encouraged to read a set of books. Then in teams, the students compete in a series of trivia challenges. Teams of up to seven students will listen to trivia questions and come up with answers in a team huddle. Each team submits their guess to the judges, who then mark the answers as correct or incorrect on a scorecard. After each question, the judges reveal the correct answer and the team moves on to the next question. At the end, the team with the highest score of correct answers wins. Can your team show off their super reading skills? This year, we have selected eight books for the Global Reading Challenge. And those books are Invisible by Cristina Diaz Gonzalez and Gabriela Epstein, The Secret of the Jade Bangle by Linda Trin, Pets Rule, My Kingdom of Darkness by Susan Tan, A Kind of Spark by Elle McNichol, The Jumbies by Tracy Batik, The Button Box by Bridget Hodder and Fosia Gilani Williams, Too Bright to See by Kyle Lukoff, and Healer of the Water Monster by Brian Young. Here to tell you more about each book are a few of our children's librarians. Buttons are useful. Without them, our pants would fall down and stuff would fall out of our pockets. But some buttons are special. Ava and her cousin Nadim discovered this one day after a tough day of school when they were both bullied for their religions. See, Ava is Jewish and Nadim is Muslim, but even with their different faiths, they are the best of friends. So after school, Granny Buena pulls out a crystal box that's full of buttons that have been passed down through the generations in Ava's family. One button catapults the cousins, along with Granny's mischievous cat, Shiva, back in time to ancient Morocco. There, they must help their ancestor, Esther, in her quest to aid Prince Abdur Rahman, who is fleeing for his life. Can Ava and Nadim ensure that Esther and the prince escape to Spain? If you like time travel, adventure, mystery, or conniving cats, I encourage you to check out The Button Box by Bridget Hodder and Fosia Galani Williams for this year's Global Reading Challenge. Hello, I'm here to talk about a book called Heater of the Water Monster. It is about a friend whose name is Nathan, who is about your age, and his parents are divorced, so he goes back and forth between his co-parents. And one summer, Nathan decides to spend some time with his grandma, Grandma Nali, because his mom is leaving for a protest against this big oil company and to protect the sacred water for native people. By the way, this protest is still happening in this real world at a place called Standing Rock. Grandma Nali lives in Navajo Nation, which is the largest reservation in North America. People there speak a language called Diné, and Nathan convinces his co-parents that he'll be okay, even though Grandma Nali's mobile home has no running water nor internet access. And of course, this is Uncle Jet, whom Nathan not admires, and who also can be a bit of trouble. One night, while already in bed, Nathan decides to go to the bathroom and meets this gigantic horned toad, who also happens to speak English. And this toad leads Nathan, as the title suggests, and you might have guessed, to the water monster, just like the Navajo creation story that um, Grandma Nali shared with Nathan. And this water monster needs help because he's been sick for over 30 years and obviously Nathan wants to help the water monster. How will he do it? You will find out. Okay, happy reading, friends. Have you heard of the Jumbies? Creatures that come out at night to steal children or lure them in harm's way? In this Caribbean fairy tale, brave 11-year-old Corinne Lemaire doesn't believe in Jumbies at first. 
She keeps going to the forest, though, and something isn't right in there. She meets many magical and scary creatures, duends with backwards feet, a jobless in her long coat, the lagahu, and the sequoias. All of them will harm children if they can. How will she combat these evil creatures when her father becomes charmed by an evil stepmother who wants them to be a family? During her journey with her friends, Malik, Boki, and Drew, she discovers her true origins. Does she save her father? What is Corinne's origin? Who is this evil stepmother? Read the Jumbies by Tracy Batiste to find out. Hola, soy María y soy una bibliotecaria aquí en la Biblioteca Pública de Seattle. Estoy aquí para hablarles de uno de nuestros libros para el Google Reading Challenge, que resulta ser una novela gráfica. El libro del que os voy a hablar hoy se llama Invisible o Invisible. Invisible está escrito por Cristina Díaz González y ilustrado por Gabriela Epstein. Lo genial de este libro es que algunos de los personajes solo hablan español, pero sus burbujas de pensamiento incluyen la traducción a inglés. Invisible sigue la historia de cinco estudiantes de secundaria. Está George, el cerebro, Sara, la solitaria, Dayara, la chica dura, Nico, el niño rico, y Miguel, el atleta. Estos cinco estudiantes se conocen en la cafetería del colegio después de haber sido obligados a realizar sus horas de servicio comunitarios escolares. Aunque están seguros que no tienen nada en común entre ellos, algunas personas los ven a todos como iguales, solo cinco chicos que hablan español. Cuando conocen a alguien que realmente necesitan su ayuda, deben decidir si estar dispuestos a exponer sus propios secretos para ayudar o si permanecer invisibles es la única forma de sobrevivir a la escuela secundaria. ¿Podrán cinco chicos que pasan desaparecidos marcar una gran diferencia? Lee la novela gráfica Invisible para el Global Reading Challenge y descúbrelo. Hello, human children. My name is Henry. The librarian that serves me was supposed to tell you about this book, My Kingdom of Darkness by Susan Tan. But this book is about a brave and magnificent chihuahua. So I told my foolish human to give me the book. For who better to tell the story of a brilliant, heroic dog than me, another brilliant, heroic dog? My Kingdom of Darkness tells the story of Ember, a chihuahua adopted by a family of humans called the Chins. But Ember is no ordinary chihuahua, for Ember has a destiny, and that destiny is to rule the world. As Ember settles into his new home and begins the work of making the Chin family into his minions, Ember meets the other family pets, Steve the hamster, Neo the canary, and Bibi the beetle. These pets instantly see that Ember is the leader that they have been waiting for, but they also warn him of the horrible danger lurking in the neighborhood. Worse than terrifying trash cans, worse even than a bath. The neighborhood is ruled by Masher, the meanest squirrel in the world, and the leader of a wicked squirrel army. Before Ember can rule the world, he must first take back the neighborhood from the squirrels, and maybe even teach Lucy, the human girl he lives with, how to stand up to her bullies as well. Is Ember up to the task? You'll have to read My Kingdom of Darkness to find out. I give this book four paws up. The story is exciting, hilarious, and delicious. Almost as delicious as human food, or my favorite taste, the taste of victory. Wait, what was that? Did you hear it? There are squirrels outside. I've got to get them. Goodbye. Hi, today I'm going to talk about The Secret of the Jade Bangle by Linda Trin and illustrated by Clinton Wynn. This early chapter book with charming black and white illustration follows the life of Anne, a nine-year-old Vietnamese Canadian. Her grandmother recently passed away, but she left her a beautiful jade bangle with a secret power. When Anne receives grandma's noi jade bangle, her grandmother's spirit appears. She asked for food and food, and Anne is on a journey to make the perfect spring roll. While she's on this quest, she finds out about her community, her culture, and most importantly, how to stand up 
for herself? Will this jade bangle give her the strength to stand up to her ballet teacher who treats her different than her white classmates and embrace her Vietnamese identity? This book is about discovering who you are, discovering your community, and also food. If you like Mindy Kim and Junie B. Jones, check this out. Hello. I am so excited to tell you about this book. It's called Too Bright to See, and it is written by Kyle Lukoff. Also, something to note, on the cover of the front of the book, there's an important sentence that says, it's hard to be yourself before you know who that is. Bug is 11 about to start middle school and lives in Vermont in a very old house that's about 175 years old. Bug's uncle Roderick has just passed away. There isn't enough money for summer camp because things got expensive when uncle Roderick had to be cared for at the hospital. Bug has always thought the old house where they live might be haunted and is used to living with curious cold spots in parts of the house. But suddenly, Bug is experiencing things out of the ordinary. Bug's bedroom is mysteriously torn apart in the middle of the night. The TV changes channels by itself, and a mysterious piece of paper on Bug's bedroom floor with scribbles that look familiar. It feels like someone is trying to communicate with Bug. Is that someone the ghost of Uncle Roderick? Bug wants to know what the ghost is trying to tell them and tries to figure it out by reading books at the library about poltergeists and listening to a voice at the pond when they're looking for minnows. While trying to solve this mystery, Bug discovers the most beautiful truth about who they are. This story may or may not be a ghost story. I'm still undecided. Read it and decide for yourself. Today, I will be talking about A Kind of Spark by L. McNichol. This book takes place in Juniper, a small town in Scotland, where the main character, Addie, learns about her town's history involving witch trials hundreds of years ago. Addie is autistic, and she sees and feels things that others do not. As she learns more about the horrible witch trials of her town's past, she campaigns for a memorial for the people who lost their lives just because they were seen as different. Addie knows there is more to the story of these witches, just like there is more to hers. Addie is challenged by her classmates, teachers, and even the leaders of her town that a memorial is not needed but she is determined to not let those in the past be forgotten and to let her true self be seen and her voice be heard. I hope you enjoy A Kind of Spark. What a great selection this year. I hope you are as excited as we are for the 2023-2024 Global Reading Challenge. Copies of the books are available in many formats. We are sending paperbacks to your school and the titles are also available at all of the Seattle Public Library locations while supplies last. In addition to those paperbacks, you can place holds on the books from the library or access ebooks and e-audio with your library link account. Check our website at spl.org slash GRC for more information. Happy reading, and we hope to see you at the library. Bye.